So, resuming debate, the Honourable Member for Skeena, Bulkley Valley. Thank you very much, Mr. Speaker. It's, uh, before, I, before I get into the, 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 the issues I wanted to raise here, I, I'm going to wait for a answer to get the exact quote from my friend from Alberta, but something to the effect of the only real jobs in oil and gas development are on the mining and the pipeline construction side. That's the only real jobs that get created. Well, that's fascinating because he should go to some of those refineries around his riding in Alberta, some of the LNG proposed uh, terminals in British Columbia, and say those aren't real jobs. The only good ones are on the mining side. I'll be splitting my, my time with my friend from Western Arctic. But it's fascinating to hear the Conservatives talk about what real jobs are and their sudden newfound love of science. They just got religion on science. Because for years when we talked about climate change, they said it didn't exist that the scientists were all wrong, all those, uh, uh, the elites, those elites they keep talking about, and the, the Prime Minister. Now, now when a bit, there's some scrap of evidence that supports one part of an argument, they suddenly think science is important. Well, my friend from Western Arctic can probably talk about some of the science and the implications on real people in the real world, as opposed to the fiction the Flat Earth Society has created for themselves year after year after year. They don't even believe the science on the dark art of economics themselves, where they say that there was no recession six months into the last global recession and produced an austerity budget. So much for believing in facts and science, where the entire world recognized we were heading into a global recession. This finance minister got up in one of his more sanguine moments and said, well, let's have an austerity budget going into the teeth of a global recession, until he reversed that entirely. It's also a finance minister who has the lucidity to say that the Senate should be abolished and had some very uh, interesting comments on the Mayor of Toronto this morning as well that were quite, quite passionate. So let's talk about Keystone. Let's talk about Keystone XL. Let's talk about a, let's talk about a Prime Minister. I'll thank the, the Foreign Affairs Minister. I know sometimes he travels abroad and thinks that he's so far away he has to shout all of his comments back to Canada. But we're here in the House of Commons, not 15 feet apart. I can hear everything he has to say and I'll, I'll look forward to his questions. Now, the, 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 the using a baseball bat for diplomacy, as this Prime Minister has done, has actually made it more difficult to approve the projects that he's hoping get approved in the United States. And I asked this in a, in a question and comment earlier to my friends, to imagine a scenario in which a U.S. President were to come to Canada and speak at an economic forum in Toronto and speak to the business community and the people of Canada, and this U.S. President, when discussing a contentious project, 95% of which was based in Canada, said, you know what? We won't take no for an answer on this project. If Canada says no for legitimate science-based reasons, social justice reasons, Canada says no, we're simply not going to accept it as the United States of America. Well, the hue and cry from our Prime Minister, from the Canadian people, from the Foreign Affairs Minister, would be heard throughout the land, because how dare a U.S. President threaten us that way? We will take care of our own domestic affairs. How about we allow the Americans to do the same thing? I know it helps. You know, the newspapers and television stations in Washington to have all the ad revenue coming from this government, the government of Alberta, pumping and promoting this project. But it was ironic, I was at an oil and gas session organized by First Nations in Prince George just a few weeks ago, where the Natural Resources Minister got up and had the audacity and the incredulity to say that his government doesn't promote projects like Keystone or Enbridge, Northern Gateway. No, no, they don't promote them. They just buy ads for them. They run down to Washington, banging them over the head in New York. They, they stand in our communities and say, you have to, we insist that you... They change all the laws, Mr. Speaker, in order to make the, the whole process for evaluating these projects economically and environmentally, make the whole thing a sham. They make it a rubber stamp process. But no, 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 this government doesn't actually promote them. Well, we know for a fact that this particular project creates jobs in the United States. And, and I met with a Texas congressman who's become a friend, Republican, decent fellow. And, and this Texan Republican, who my friends would get along with so well, this is back in 2008. We had a nice meeting in Washington. And at one point he said, this whole Keystone thing, let me get it straight. Are you guys, is your government actually promoting, promoting this pipeline? Because the refineries were based in his constituency. The refineries that are going to take all this raw bitumen and upgrade it. And I said, yes, Congressman, uh, the Canadian government's current position is to promote this project. And he said, well, I want you to take a message home to my Canadian friends. And he says, well, tell them this. If the roles were reversed, and we, we had the oil sands, and y'all had the, I think he said y'all, had, had the refineries, it would be over my dead body before we would allow the raw export of our natural wealth to your country to have all the jobs created. Although conservatives now believe that all those refinery and upgrading jobs aren't real jobs. 
No, 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 no. No, the temporary pipeline jobs, those are real jobs. Yeah, yeah. The ones you get to make the job happen once, those are real, but those other ones are not. That's what the Conservatives just said. Verbatim. Those are real jobs. Those, those portion, but the upgrading, tell that to people in the forestry industry, in the fishing industry, in the mining industry. Anybody who works in an upgrading facility, anybody who works in a plant that takes the natural wealth and endowment of this country and does something with it. Tell them they're not in real jobs. You know what? I think it was actually a, a salient and transparent moment for this government because by their policies, that is exactly what they think of those jobs that add value to our natural resources. That's what's happened to those jobs under this Conservative government. We've lost 350,000 of those manufacturing and upgrading jobs since this government took office. Fact. They're entitled to their opinions, Mr. Speaker, but not their own facts. And the facts of the matter are they simply don't care. They don't think those are real jobs. Now, they talk about opening secondary markets, feeding the U.S. market. Let's understand that this is a generational decision. These pipelines are generational. You don't build them for five or ten years. You'll build them for 40, 50, 60 years, which is also some of the problems. My friends talk about how safe pipelines are and they never leak. Tell the people in Kalamazoo that. That's what Enbridge said. They've been, they've been cited 115 times by the EPA. You want science? They said, scientifically, this pipeline's in trouble. And this Canadian company said, never mind. We're just going to keep running the oil through. And all those people that lost their houses, that got sick, because a company from this country and a government in this country that doesn't think that regulations matter, that thinks that industry can just watch itself. Well, the Americans named it properly right. They said it was the Keystone Cops. That's how Enbridge was running it. And these are the same companies that spill here in Canada as well. 850 spills since 2001. Significant spills, not trickles, spills. And often they get found by hunters and trappers out in the bush that just notice that they're standing in a bunch of muck out in the muskeg and it's not quite right. What is it? Well, it's oil that's been leaking for who knows how long. The idea that a Canadian government would stand up for the exporting of 40,000 value-added jobs is an anathema to me. It's contrary to Canadian values. You think a government that ran on some slogan, what was it? We're going to stand up for Canada. Well, one would assume that that actually meant stand up for Canada. Yeah, 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 that they would, they would stand up for Canada and Canadian jobs. No, no, no. No, no, no. Not, not what this government does. And, the, and the, the numbers don't lie. The numbers don't lie. So to my friends across the way, the, the, the comments about no-brainer from their strategic uh, genius leader, the, the, that we won't take no for an answer, doesn't make their case. Sounds tough. Ah, uh, yeah, the, the, the boys in the patch like that. The oil executives, they like that, that tough guy stuff from the, the, the fake cowboy across the way who grew up in Toronto. That's what they like. They, they, want, they want the sense that, ah, oh, there's the sheriffs in town, he's going to tell those Yanks what's for. That doesn't work. Because it actually makes it harder for the, presidential and, and the president and the administration to approve the project, because now it looks like he's being bullied. And it doesn't help when the government denies the existence of climate change for year after year after year, and when they finally accept the science, do nothing about it. That's not me saying that. That's the Environment Commissioner saying they don't understand the implications of, sci of the science and climate change. They don't have any programs that are ready to go that are actually reducing the carbon footprint. So th now, for all of those things make it so much easier to get a no. When, when Canada uh, flips off at the international community time and time again, it makes things harder, not easier. Maybe they think being tough is, is what it's all about, but it isn't. Now, now we know, we know, because it's been our history, and it must be our future, that the basic principle in this country that is so rich, that is so diverse, and endowed with so much wealth in our natural resources, that our first and fundamental principle should be to respect the environment, actually treat with First Nations for rights and title and accommodation, to gain the social license at the community level, and create the jobs that those resources for generations have created. Yet we have a government that is wedded to an ideology that says that is not their role. That isn't their role. Their role is to build, big, build the biggest <laughs> rubber stamp they can and stamp everything that comes in front of them, regardless of what the actual prospects say. So that when someone comes along and says, here's a pipeline that will take 40,000 jobs out of Canada, and Alberta will move from upgrading as much as 60% of the bitumen out of the oil sands to now down to about a third, and it's dropping, that this government says we have no part in that conversation. That, those aren't Canadian values. That is not a government standing up for Canada. We need one that will. We need one that understands the balance between the environment and the economy, understands that these resources only happen once. You only take the oil out of the ground 
once. My definition is not renewable, so let's do it right. Let's have environmental considerations. Let's get the social license from the community. And for heaven's sakes, let's create the jobs that have built this country from day one. Thank you very much, Mr. Speaker. Right. Questions and comments. The Honourable Member for Yellowhead. Well, yes, uh, thank you, uh, Mr. Speaker. And I uh, listened to my Honourable Colleague uh, with uh, spew his uh, ideology. And uh, it, it really is West Coast ideology that's not driven by any facts. Uh, let me help him a little bit. The uh, oil, uh, first of all, I'm in the United States a considerable amount, and I uh, know a little bit about what's going on in the United States. And actually, to help him out a little bit, the oil that came up through and was, uh, was part of the disaster in Lac Megantic was not Canadian oil. That was American oil being refined in Canada. And, it was, and, and he said that would never happen in America. Well, I, I beg to differ with him. The, number two, his ideology is that he, he's refusing, and this motion is all about refusing to move oil through pipeline. And uh, because it's environmentally uh, a, a, a poisonous way to do it. If he looked at the facts on it, oil is going to move one way or the other. It's going to move by rail or it's going to move by pipe. And this party is so driven by ideology that they won't look at the facts on that. They won't look at what's good for Canada. They won't look at what's good for the environment. They just are driven by ideology and saying no to something that they have no idea what they're saying no to. And I, I, I refuse to accept that. I, I see that uh, this motion just reinforces what I've thought of them all the time, is that anti-trade. The Honourable Member for Skeena Bulker Valley. Yeah, uh, I take particular concern with my friend's use of terminology. I'm discuss later, but, the, but the, let me read the motion for my friend so we can actually understand what we're talking about today. No, I don't, I don't think he actually did. The Conservatives are claiming that they did, so let me just give it to them verbatim so they can understand what's happening here. That, that, uh, let me quote, calm down, that in the motion, that, that in the opinion of the House, the Keystone XL pipeline would intensify, quiet for a moment, would intensify the export of unprocessed raw bitumen and would export more than 40,000 well-paying Canadian jobs and is therefore not in Canada's best interest. That's what it says. That's, that's what the motion says. So, so the, the, the motion is, is, is correct in its statement of fact, that 40,000 jobs are associated to the upgrading of this much oil, raw bitumen moving south. Those are facts. My friends are going to dispute this, but these are the same facts that they rely on when they talk about the economic benefits. You can't have it both ways. This is what is in the reports that study this particular project. You want to argue about the number of jobs, go ahead, but it is job export policy. That's what this government's running, raw export. Order.